What's up, everyone? Welcome to the first edition of This Week in Confluence, directed by yours truly, Shut In Quarantino. Goal today is just to go over some pretty terrific risk and reward setups that worked against specific and defined levels in the hopes that it can thoughtfully contribute to your execution or your mindset or maybe just your overall relationship with this craft headed into the next week. And I do hope you and yours are staying healthy and strong in these unprecedented time. So the first chart today coming to you from Think or Swim. As many of you know, we use and swear by Ninja Trader. Fairly difficult to overstate what's possible in a well calibrated Ninja Trader platform, but we have been trying to lovingly work on bringing some of this stuff over to Think or Swim because it's not possible as such in the native in the native uh, platform. Um, and they just make it fairly difficult in true Think or Swim fashion, but we will try to continue to persist and bring some of the stuff over. So Monday morning, nice confluence long near or around the open with IWM coming into its AS2 pre-market and, and a really, really nice rally starting around the RTH open. At the same time as that IWM signal, NASDAQ was at its uh, supply and demand level, one of its most important supply and demand levels. If you guys will recall from the Project Impact video, these levels are not generated after uh, price respects it, stalls there and reverses, not after price appreciates it, not after uh, price shows that it's a meaningful level, but before just simple horizontal zo zones drawn from prior reversals. So wicks in many cases, but also a lot of closes, both closes on the 30 minute candle basis and session closes. So RTH session closes. Uh, one trade we didn't take, but that worked really nicely as well was just the, the next supply and demand higher here. Uh, the resistance, um, you got a, a few points above it, maybe 10 points above it, but far below what a stop should necessarily be in this environment. Uh, 10 point NASDAQ stop being fairly regular and you need something more in this environment. So um, that would have worked uh, with a little help from some of some relevant components like XLV at the highs, uh, monthly R1, daily R1 confluencing with that NASDAQ signal and XBI, obviously a very liquid biotech ETF being quarterly R1 confluencing at that NASDAQ signal. Moving on, crude oil, just remember, you guys will recall there are kind of two forms or tiers of confluence. You can have a confluence of meaningful levels in a single instrument or or, or instruments that are very similar or related or, or mostly identical. And then there's more of an across the board confluence where you have a lot of uh, instruments with a relationship with one another, all confluencing together. So this was just a cool example on the, on the first bucket on that individual side where you had crude oil, which was obviously a lot of eyes on it and uh, a lot of headline risk and just a lot of liquidity, historical times in this instrument. Um, nice early long at supply and demand, uh, the upper side of the zone and the lower side of the zone respected. Uh, and then you came up into the next supply and demand zone higher daily S2. And then this isn't anchored VWAP, but just the all hours session VWAP there. Uh, so a little, a little intra instrument confluence there with supply and demand um, came down, kind of blew through that level. You see the response at supply and demand and daily S3. Um, fairly weak and lethargic, but then a nice confluence at a, at a NYMEX gap fill, daily S4, weekly S1, and the lower end of a supply and demand zone there being the at least the short-term reprieve to the sell-off on Monday. This was a really interesting example that uses the power of ADR. So if you guys take a look at this average daily range concept here, at this moment, this is a snapshot from real, a screenshot from real time. You come up into this, you see this little confluential level of a supply and demand zone, this, an intraday pivot point, just that little black PP there. Um, and you had a decision to make here. So you have 34 and a half points of range uh, on the day so far at that moment in time. And you guys see how the prior days, and the three day and the five day average daily range was kind of averaged out to 50, 51, almost 52, 45 and a half, and then 49 quarter. So you've got kind of a 49 or 50 point ish confluence of average daily range. So the cool thing here is if you add 15 points, 
to this level when it was hit at this moment in time, it takes you right to the next confluential level. You have a RTH gap fill and the next supply and demand. So you were exactly 15 points of upside away or an ADR expectation fulfillment away from the next sort of confluence level. Only two pieces of evidence there, but that's the next meaningful level. And then if you were to add 15 points of downside to the lower end of the range that had already been established, now you have another little two piece confluence with supply and demand and the 50 day exponential moving average. Of course, this is a five minute chart, but this is the 50 day EMA just represented. You can see how slow moving it is on this, on this lower time frame. So this is the before chart. Here's the after chart. Obviously, uh, guys, we took you know, hypothesis two, if you will, and kind of launched lower towards the um, the lower kind of the lower scenario of that expectation. You see here that uh, this was this screenshot was taken a few minutes or just a few uh, handful of minutes after the RTH close in the CME settlement closure time, the extra 15 minutes. And you could see how we'd hit the 50 point ADR expectation, just kind of nesting up in line with uh, the rest of those numbers so nicely. And what that actually looks like here is just after the close, we actually came down and got it there at the 50 EMA supply and demand. So perfectly at this moment, you had this incredible decision to make. Do you, do you get the extra 15 points and go even higher, almost parabolic up to gap fill in the next supply and demand zone? Or do you go all the way down and just punk a bunch, bunch of longs essentially to get the 50 EMA and supply and demand? So just really cool stuff there using that average daily range tool. So what happened after the close here is you just kind of grind it up in the Globex, a little A, B, C, D pattern, if you will. And at about 9 p.m. Eastern, we revisited this supply and demand that was so crucial there and there. Uh, about, again, again, about 9 p.m. Eastern. By the way, um, none of you go and backtest uh, reversals over the last few weeks at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, just absolutely nothing to see there in any sense. A strong ignore from us. Uh, this is an, uh, an example from Tuesday, the 21st, uh, kind of in, uh, in line with some of these others. Uh, individual confluence, if you will, so just one instrument, sort of off in its own world, but a nice confluence with three pieces of evidence, quarterly R3, annual a R4, and then daily R1, the little sliver of red there. This is the before picture. And this is the after picture, not a bad reversal, just $12 a share from um, the signal at the confluence. Nice bottom, also of course confluence, monthly R2, and then if you look, it's the daily anchored VWAP, so not an imaginary line, not some bizarre extrapolation, but an actual anchored VWAP from a swing low, and that was as it, as it looks like uh, to the tick, literally, so. Moving on to another kind of individual confluence example, if you guys will, uh, IBM exogenous input, uh, get nice gap down, not too significant, but notable anyway, gap down into uh, annual S1 and monthly pivot point. So two nice pieces of evidence there. Uh, came up to weekly S1, came back down and retested the level. And the funny thing about this was that low, is also the anchored VWAP from that recent huge swing low. And that is also to the tick. If you zoom in enough there, that's a to the tick low that you could have had drawn in real time. Nothing, nothing hindsight about that, as was this swing low with three tests. So going, uh, moving on to the swing low on uh, this same day, Tuesday the 21st, you guys remember when I was talking on the whiteboard about how so many times when you have effective levels and they don't work either via violation or just by missing. So when you have a, a level you know works, but in some cases it may just never, it may get a few ticks away or a few points away and just never actually hit or signal, or it'll hit and violate more than what a stop would be. And some people will reverse engineer and curve fit their whole system because you back tested and you know quarterly pivot point works. But here's ES on Tuesday, the S&P 500 on Tuesday, and 
I guess if you squint hard enough, you could say that this level worked, um, but it didn't hit actually, did it? So keep paying attention to some of the stuff I said in the Project Impact video, so much of this can be attributed to what if there was a confluence moment playing out. We kind of busted through supply and demand, the gray shaded area, not quite to quarterly pivot point. Um, so what else was going on in the background here? Let's see if we can get some clues. Similarly to the ES example there where a really nice higher time frame pivot point missed weekly S1 missed by three or four points in RTY, the Russell 2000. But what you did have there, if you're starting to look at a more confluential perspective instead of just one level, remember we talked about this, people focus so much on one level, their pet level in just one instrument, maybe their pet instrument, or, or maybe it's two, one level in two instruments or two levels in one. But if you start to zoom out and try to build pieces of evidence the way a good lawyer would for confluences in the in the dimension of time, for confluences at one moment versus just one level and one instrument or a couple of instruments, what you did have here in the Russell was a really nice RTH trend line that hit this, this black line here. And then this, it's uh, one of the most important supply and demand levels. Uh, you can see it has responses every time it hits it. Uh, also holding long with that trend line. So two pieces of evidence there versus the one that missed in WS1. What else did you have this day? So this is the NASDAQ. You can see that confluence low I'm talking about was a perfect supply and demand. Again, this gold shaded and then the weekly S1. That So this is Monday, this is Tuesday, that weekly, that week's weekly S1, last week's weekly S1. And so you say, hey, Tim, what about these two levels that just kind of blew through? So the first level, did it really blow through? The first level came down without any confluence, nothing else going on in anything else at that moment. But the supply and demand level worked. You, had, you, you kind of have to squint. But in this environment, that's 20 or 30 NQ points, $600 a contract. But you correctly say this level didn't work at all. So if we just kind of zoom out and take some context in on the NASDAQ in particular on that level, the first level that confluence and did get a response a couple of wicks are in the 30 minute obviously structure and supply and demand there the second level was just an air pocket nothing nothing to speak of there so maybe a context especially since there was no confluence at that time of day in the dimension of time at that moment nothing else at its relevant levels and then only then when you got down to the next supply and demand level just a little bit above higher time frame anchored vwap and structure obviously did you get the confluence moment with everything as a whole or most things in the ecosystem agreeing with that supply and demand level in the NASDAQ? So what do I mean? What was all going on? Well, one, one sector that was in focus on this day was semiconductors. I know a lot of people uh, trade these and focus on these, but just, just walk with me through the garden of how many of these semiconductors, really a sector in focus on Tuesday, the 21st of April, were in play here. So at the same time that ES was was bouncing and, and 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 bottoming, but not at its quarterly pivot point, at the same time as the RTY wasn't quite at weekly S1, but it had the trend line, it had the supply and demand. You had the semiconductors here, SMH obviously the most liquid semiconductor ETF at annual pivot point and the daily 20 EMA again depicted here on the lower time frame, but this is the daily 20D EMA, if you will. You had a, a bounce off annual pivot point in 20 EMA up to the weekly S1 and you sort of retested the level into close. Other semiconductors, Intel, middle of nowhere, right? Didn't quite hit its quarterly pivot point, really just nothing. I mean, it would just be, it would just be a, an abuse of truth to say anything on the chart there is was active at lows other than a near miss at the quarterly pivot point, right? But conflu think confluentially, what about an NVIDIA? 20 EMA, weekly S1 and a retest in the close. Micron, another one, nothing there to speak of. Advanced micro devices, however, nice MR1. And then where did it stop? Weekly pivot point and another sort of sort of light retest into close. I have another batch of these semis for you. Skyworks Solutions, higher time frame, anchored VWAP and monthly pivot point with a retest into close. Tower Semiconductor, annual pivot point and uh, nice relative strength with no retests into close. Broadcom, weekly S2 near miss. Where did it go? Annual S1, where did it retest the close? Weekly S2 and then finally Qualcomm with daily 20 EMA. 
Weekly is one relative weakness. Couldn't quite up to get get to quarterly pivot point, uh, and then retest there of weekly S one into close. Obviously, this chart has the next day, guys, so you can see the um, the force fed resolution there of, of the long. But the point is that these signals were available to you in real time. I have the next day and how well it worked charted here, but you have a confluence signal. This this next day could equally as well be a 700, down, 700 point down day in the NASDAQ, but that signal still fired. So you can use your system and definitively backtest or definitively decide for yourself, do you have levels or signals or some way of organizing information that actually works? Now, you'll find if you test these levels that Confluence signals often do pay off in the direction that they indicate, but the point stands is this is a real-time way of organizing information, not a hindsight-based one. You guys remember that IBM trade um, from the prior day Monday, the 20th, with annual S1 and monthly pivot point. Well, nice rally, and where did it go to the next day, right? Quarterly pivot point, weekly pivot point, nice reversal, and then a retest into close in the opposite direction of most of of the market really kind of doesn't that kind of indicate to you guys that these, these markets are about levels there's some some really cool stuff there um moving on guild moving on to thursday i guess it was the the 23rd um gilead science obviously had some a little bit of headline influence here where did it bottom quarterly pivot point uh, to the tick. Shout out to my good friend, Ricky Analog, who is in agreement with me that sh we should ignore these levels because they are just not effective. Okay, and the last thing here to finish up, guys, really beautiful confluence long on Friday morning. Shout out to my friend, uh, Chris, uh, goes by Mind Makes Matter M3 on Twitter, someone I've collaborated with for, gosh, I guess maybe... <laughs> I guess on the on the on the second half of a decade, maybe a little bit more than six or six years or so, uh, I know he was um, he was fairly nicely in some some longs on Friday. But you had such a nice confluence long on Friday, just after the open. So you guys, you guys remember this uh, big big confluence long that we talked about just now, just a few minutes ago on Tuesday morning. So that's Tuesday's session long with the semiconductors, uh, with uh, IBM, with ES and NQ and RTY at relevant levels. We talked about that. So if you, all you had done is just drawn an anchored VWAP from the low, not cherry picking, but just from whatever low and whatever instrument you wanted there, 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 the exact five minute bar low. And you just had that depicted on your screen at this moment. It was, I guess it was about, it was about maybe you can see it happened at, because of the nature of confluence, it happened at different times. MDY, which is the mid-cap index, took maybe an hour, hour and a half to get there. Semiconductors, however, kind of tagging, intra, tagging that anchored VWAP and that daily S1 right after the open. XBI kind of in between, maybe 45 minutes or so hitting gap fill and monthly R1. But a con you see, you focus on the dimension and time, you focus on the basket, you focus on the ecosystem of things all hitting their levels at, at varying at varying moments around the same cluster of moments so this is the before picture and this is the after picture uh, obviously super nice rally from anchored view out from the swing low and mdy smh uh, daily s1 and that anchored vwap and then xbi nice confluence of monthly r1 and that same anchored vwap just boom 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 these are big trades RTY, basically the same exact story. Anchored VWAP from the swing low, nothing cherry picked, the exact five minute bar of its swing low, confluencing obviously just a couple of points below its weekly pivot point. Uh, didn't quite get to annual S2, but a nice confluence there with two pieces of evidence. And then just kind of looking at a random or a, a nicely, uh, an individual signal that worked or an individual stock that sort of set up with its peers in an ecosystem in a confluential long, you have Facebook with that same anchored view up, not pictured there, but it's the same low. Um, and you had a really nice confluence of annual pivot point, an anchored view up there, and just a beast of a rally in that instrument to close out a week. That uh, signal in the calls, the 182.50 call you see up here, the options convention. 75 cents to 750, of course, 
Uh, I worry a little bit about your money management if you're holding for that entire move, but even 75 cents to five bucks or four bucks is a, it's a great return on capital for most traders, for, for us certainly and for most traders that I know as well. And just one last example to round out the video of just individual confluence. You guys remember there's ecosystem confluence and you can also have confluence in just one instrument with a lot of things coming together in one instrument or in similar instruments to give like little local microcosmic confluence GC uh, mid morning uh, on Friday with three anchored VWAPs uh, swing low and then two swing highs from the past confluencing that same moment in time guys lower end of supply and demand little response there also weekly pivot point I don't know that you hold for this whole response but that is a 20 point trade just back up to the top of supply and demand that's two thousand dollars a contract too rich for my blood uh, even half that trade you're bringing in a nice living wage so that's it guys I hope you have a great remainder of your weekend this has been this week in confluence um, be well uh, be healthy and be strong and I'll see you soon